one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let the record, <laughs> record indicate that all seven members are present. Yep, yep. Okay, we have two sets of minutes to approve tonight. The first one will be from June 10th. Everybody have a chance to read them? Anybody have any additions or corrections? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve them. Do we have a motion? Do I hear a second? Second. Motion and a second. Favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. <clears throat> what? I abstained. I wasn't there. Oh, well. <laughs> Says you were. Oh, no, no, no you were. There were three absent. Yeah. Was in Montana. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, don't you don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, if you don't understand what went on. I just wasn't there. These are the ones you want signed in this manila folder. The first one's May. You approved them last month, but we did not get them signed. So. <clears throat> Barry, I'll just wait till we get the other one approved and I'll pass them over. Sounds good. Okay, the next one is the July 8th minutes. Everybody have a chance to look those over? Additions or corrections? If not, I motion to approve. Admitted. Moved. Motion to move. Second. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, this is a public hearing, it's supposed to have been. No public here. So the item that you have on your the subdivision control list. However, we are going to ask that you continue it because it was noticed that there was a section engineer left out so there's more there it's this was this is a lot of homework it, for it me is, it's a lot um <laughs> it, I, I don't think it's a huge no, addition no, if you want to yeah, step up and explain yeah, what the well, change well, is the thing the uh well, we thought we gave the engineers everything they needed and got it back uh there was one section out of there that uh we have a, a section in under value add services as part of that, but then we also have a spec in there. It's called Beyond Specs. Basically, it it tells what the developer needs to do and everything like that. Because uh, typically, uh, there's a warranty on all piping materials, a 10, 10 thing. And if they bought it from a national distributor, say they got it cheaper from somewhere else, that who is going to warranty that after it's turned over to Town Danville? And uh, like that, so it addresses part of that. So there's stipulations in there about OSHA training, a whole bunch of stuff that that person that when they install that pipe performs all that that stuff. So that, that section got left out. That got left out. That's added. And then also too, we found that they put in uh, a standard that's from American Water Works on allowable leakage, but that's been around for 40 years. We do not do allowable leakage. We basically we have 150 psi uh, for a duration of two to three hours. With no pressure drop, makes everything a little tighter. I don't like any leakage. And so that they did not have that in there. So they made a couple of changes. But other than that, everything else is the same. We just wanted to make sure we get everything right. And uh, well, we can see about doing that. That's why we're asking for a continuance to next month. And do it like that and, and get that in. And I think 
the process, once the, the uh, uh, commission here approves that, then it goes to the town council for adoption, I believe, in ordinance. Yes. So, so sometime in September. Based on the recommendations, yeah. We forward a recommendation to them. And then yes. Okay. That's pretty much all of the only changes that we've we seen that, that was needed. And then others, some... Loris is an English teacher. Found some misspells in there. Their spell check or grammar on their document didn't they uh, stand out at you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, two is so. uh, T O W. Uh, <laughs> that T O W instead of T W O in the, in there. Yeah, stuff like spell that. Spell check's not going to pick up on that too. That's toe. Toe. The it's a. It's a, word. It's a, it's a yeah. Toe. It's well, same way with real. Real yeah. is a real. word yeah. also. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we could. Uh, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's a grammar checker. Not grammar checker. Check. Is that why? Okay. Grammar <laughs> checker. So that Loris. Circle some of that, but uh, I think we. Can. But it really doesn't matter in, unless it changes the meaning. And the one that's all most remote is, I think, is the one that really needs to be. What is that supposed to say? I don't know. I, uh, I see I that. Think, I think most is just probably a mistake. It might be, and uh, we we can. Uh, it to be all. Yeah, I'll, I can. What page was that on? It was one. Was it, <laughs> it was very first? Yeah. first. Yeah. Under A <laughs> four. Yeah, okay. page one. Four, <laughs> four, 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 okay. Well, uh, I'll, I will call them in the morning. I'll call Kent Elliott and say, hey, we need some grammar check. Kent's not going to check. Yeah, well, I, I, somebody <laughs> somebody will. But uh, we'll we'll do the see about getting the grammar check and get, was, yeah. But ba basically, we want the document correct because this uh, this change that we're doing, we haven't changed our specs probably 30 plus years. We're trying to get it up up to date for Is future a, down the road. Total rewrite? No, no, it's just a few additions of the page. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just there was a uh, and part of the thing where you have uh, value add services in there. It's kind of blank below that. That was the next portion uh, is filled in after that. Uh, well, it would have been nice if they'd have highlighted the change. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> if it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Section F. Yes, yeah. I mean it's for some it's, so. Uh, you know, what's the best way to approach this? Just um, do a section, just do a portion, you know. So we just decided to completely take section F out and replace it with this. So we'll have, we'll have all that for you guys. Get Bar that out, barring the section that is coming from the attorneys, do you feel comfortable with the document that oh, was absolutely. produced? Yeah. Do you feel this is a, a good working document that's going to help us move forward? Yes. Because the uh, everything is, if you notice, and especially the diagrams and specific pictures and stuff, pictures, like I said, worth a thousand words. You know, guys can't, we, we used to get interpretations from everybody. Well, did you say this and that and that? And they haven't put that stuff in in 30 years. And we're trying to get this modernized to where as much as possible. And granted, there's always things in the industry changing. There's always going to have that. But this will get us up to speed. But you're the one that may, that did this, right? What's that? Updated this. Yes. Time. Yeah. So you're the one that needs to be pleased, I think. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. Doing, right? Yeah. I've been trying to get something standard in the town for a long time, uh, especially when you got multiple subdivisions coming in. Everybody's trying to put their own brand in, and I said, it's you know, like say, if we like Cadillacs, that's what you're putting in. Yeah. You're putting Cadillac in. So that's 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 it. Whether Brownsburg likes Chevys, you like Dodge, whatever. This is what we want. And then you get a standardization. That way, whoever is in charge, it's in a document. They can go electronically. They can get it, and and it's there. It's spelled there. And that way, you don't get ten thousand people knocking on your door. Well, why is this? And why is that? And it's it's spelled out for them. So if you've got somebody going to bid on a project, they can get this information. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who inspects the expectations? Uh, I we we inspect out when they put them in. All of the people in the water department. Yes, yes, yeah. we're we're certified in distribution system licensing, and that's part of inspections and installation practices. In that process, do we have forms that the particular inspector has to sign off and date? And normally, uh, what we do is just uh, typically we'll have an engineer with us in this project. They have an engineer, and they're supposed to ins do inspection reports along with us. And then we basically are there day to day, and they come out whenever you know we need to. To inspect and usually part of our job is our certification in the water industry is knowing the proper installation practices right. and that's what we do and and normally if everything's fine and we see something 
uh, out of the ordinary, they can change it right then. It's not properly put in. Okay, you need to take it apart and do it right. Uh, typically, uh, when we sign off on anything, is when we do the pressure test. That tells how good you put the put it together. If Who's it leaks, liable or not. if they, if we fail and they fail to do what's correct. We if they fail, uh, we have a bond, performance bond. So we have ten percent that we we keep on the performance bond. When everything is all said and done, everything they get that performance bond back. And how long you, does that take? Oh, I've never had to keep a, a <coughs> so performance they, bond. So they don't have any liability after the. Usually, usually uh, on installation practices in our subdivision stuff is uh, a new subdivision come in is one year. They're liable for one year, and then they turn it over to us. And that's why we're trying to address that warranty issue for the additional 10 years or uh, nine years beyond that. And typically, uh, those materials, they're pretty good stuff. Uh, and, you know, they're, 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 it's good quality stuff. That's why I have no problem paying good money for good stuff. But you're you're always going to have something, a bad fitting, oh. casting, or whatever. But uh, but typically we uh, we inspect to make sure it's good stuff. We we look at it when we unload it from the yard. You inspect it visually. Then if there's any is issues, we're not going to accept it. And uh, that's that's pretty much part of our job when we when it, stuff is delivered. Do we lay any of that liability off? Yeah, that that I'll say something, Jim. Yeah, we have a three year maintenance bond. Yes. That's it for a period of three years. So when a developer puts all the infrastructure mm -hmm. in, that is guaranteed to 110% of the construction cost for a period of three years. We go out and do a final inspection after that three years. That's turned over to the town. And at that mm -hmm. point, we take it over. The additional six or seven years is what Jim's put mm -hmm. in these um, plans. Yep. So, so we. we warranty on the materials only? That, that covers everything. If everything, the asphalt yeah. fails, curbs fail, yep. curbing, storm, anything like that, water, mm -hmm. sewer, it's all under that three year um, maintenance bond. That's on the maintenance. I'm, I think on the actual material itself, it's it's a one year from from the actual installer that, that does that. But then we've got the continuation of three year in case something happens, falls apart. But uh, but I, I do know that some guys, they buy from a national distributor. And versus a local distributor, you have licensed local distributors uh, that are basically Indiana's their territory. If you buy from them, they will cover that additional that warranty and part of that VAS system that we're in that we have. That's part of that where a developer he buys it from a national guy maybe meet our specs, but who's going to continue that warranty after he turns over to town? And it could be such thing that say a hydrants blow apart, uh, bad castings or whatever. Well. EJP, even though they're a distributor, you didn't buy it through us, the authorized distributor, so we're not covering. We're not liable. We're not going to cover that. And uh, uh, I've ran into that uh, with some uh, people. Uh, Illinois is a uh, uh, core main. They're an Illinois distributor. They have the water spire hydrants that we have. They're our specs. They had uh, Wellington. They had some hydrants out there. And, and uh, he said, hey, we got your spec of your hydrant. And I said, well, it might be, but they're red. We don't use red. Well, we'll get some yellow ones. Well, they brought yellow ones out. And I looked underneath there, and it came from Chicago. I said, that's not going to work. He said, what do you mean? Uh, I said, well, it didn't come to an Indiana distributor. Well, it's the same thing. I said, it might be, but it's not an Indiana distributor. We're in Indiana, not Illinois. And uh, I said, I tell you what, I will allow you to put it in. If you sign an affidavit that you will, you will continue the warranty on this item, for the next nine years, they wouldn't do it. I said, take them, hit the road. So, yeah, I'm just trying to protect the town. Typically, we don't have that issues, but you just never know. Who keeps the records of this? Uh, well, usually we do when we sign on the on the construction thing. When we sign off, well, we got the pressure testing and all that. And then all the hydrants, they all have dates on them when they're installed. And usually we keep it like that, so we know pretty much everything that comes by. And then, like I say, we can call the distributor and they can find out. Everything's got a serial number on it and you all that stuff. You can also use purchase orders. Purchase orders, purchase anything like that, that, yeah. We paid for the material. That's all on record. Do we ever audit our records? I State Board of Accounts would probably, I think they do that. I'm not sure that comes through Jenny. I, I personally never have had anything audited, anything yeah. like that. So, yeah, we never, never have anything. Anything purchased would probably go through State Board of Accounts when they, they come and do an audit. 
Why, wh why did you purchase this? Where, where are those items at? And typically, fire hydrants are kind of hard to find, uh, hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, valves, uh, yeah, that's a different story. But hydrants, no, that's, that sticks up like sore thumb. They so, hide really well under pavement. Yeah, yeah, valves yeah. do. Yeah, 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 when they get paved over. But, uh, but typically, we're trying, we're trying to get the town back up to new standards and more modern type stuff. And uh, I like the fittings on the hydrants. Uh, and Tommy knows uh, install and stuff in the old days. You have mechanical joint fittings, which a six inch would have six bolts around it. With a, oh, you have a rubber and, a, and everything, and you compress the rubber. Well, now we we have what's called alpha hydrants. It's basically uh, it's a restrained joint uh, gasket, all made in one to the hydrant. You just put it in to make sure it's clean. Put it in till it bottoms out. You tighten one bolt up. It's got a specification of so many foot pounds. That's it. The installation's done. You're saving, it's a little more money, but you're saving labor costs also. And it's a lot cleaner. And the industry's slowly going to that. And that's why I, I have no problem about making changes. I've always been in front about that, wanting to, you know, worst it could do is not work. That's the way I always looked at it. And, and time's uh, pretty important when you're talking about water being shut oh, off. Oh, yeah. ab absolutely. Infrastructure, you know, our, our infrastructure's aging. And uh, that's, you know, kind of like we are, we're aging. And it's, you know, you can only fix so much without replacing. But that's why we're, we're upgrading our standards and trying to get it the way we want, get some consistency here in town and do it like that. So, every, like I say, everybody's different. Uh, whoever takes over my position later, you know, uh, that's why we got that in there. You know, if I went to another town and they've got Brand X, I'm not going to change Brand X because that's what they've got. I'd be, be a fool to it. They'd probably run around on a rail if I did that. But... Uh, but that's why we're we're trying to do that and get that get that up to speed because we've had so many times that people call. Where's your specs? Uh, <laughs> it's thirty years ago, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to argue with them when they're trying to sell you a product or sell this contractor. And and the bottom line is the contractors trying to get the cheapest that they can get to make the most profit. That's exactly what their deal is, and I really don't care about that. I look what's going to benefit. The town over the next fifty to seventy five hundred years, and hopefully that'll that'll still be here. Like some. Do you know, said. last year when we changed insurance carriers, did we audit these this kind of inventory? Yeah, I think uh, we took asset hey, management. Asset management. management. We did asset management thing. Uh, what we did, how many hydrants in the, and we've got probably fifteen million dollars worth of assets in town minimum, and uh, uh, and that's the number of hydrants that we have. You got to put a dollar value on that that stuff. So I'm sure that all comes into play on our insurance insurance stuff, and uh, that's why that's good. That's why we spent that money to do that. I think what thirty five thousand dollars to to get that and stuff put in. So, but yeah, it's all well worth. What I feel is you know you got to town's growing, and you know the, the, as the town grows, uh, make these new subdivisions come in, put in what we want, and then that way let them foot the bill. And then we take it over, and then hopefully that lessens our maintenance out in the system, other than somebody digging on it and tearing it out. But uh, and then we can concentrate on trying to uh, slowly take care of the older part of the system, rehabbing it as time goes. How old is Clear Creek? It's at least twenty-five Mid -90s, years. Mid-nineties, I think. Was Mid it early yeah, 90s? it's probably it's, it's going on twenty. It's over twenty years. Has yeah. there been any? Unnecessary maintenance there compared to other areas. Uh, yeah, areas. well, part of the maintenance that I've had the issues with, and we changed our standards. We always had copper service lines, and uh, we've had failure on copper in some of the. Uh, and and we've got copper in town. I put in forty years ago, never had an issue. We've got copper that's been put in five years ago and is leaking. Uh, and when we pull it out, we pull poly back, and the copper's got pinholes in it. Electrolysis. I don't know if it's bad grounding from homes, what the deal is. It and comes down to bonding. Bonding. All your, if you have a complete metallic system, copper, you know, metal, black mm -hmm. iron, they want you to ground that. So when they ground that, that brings a little bit of charge to it. And if you've mm -hmm. got a thinner, like a, an L, mm -hmm. you know, type, that's a yep. wall thickness of copper, yep. you can put a pinhole in it and then you get a leak. And the, and the basically way... basically introducing electricity to that yeah pipe. there's more more tin in copper now copper's cheaper made than what it was 40 years ago it's uh, i don't know if they well they've taken the lead out or anymore 
And so thus, it's weaker, thinner. So what we're doing, and part of our specs, we're allowing now from the, from the corporation, it's a brass corporation, we're using poly pipe to, to the meter pits. And then, we, of course, we'll be running a tracer wire to that so you can locate it. And then that's, that seems to stop that issue. And, uh, but that's typically, we've had more instances out in Clear Creek on copper than probably any subdivision in town. And it's probably like the bonding and the, and the houses that were built and the way they, because I know uh, electrical, I think the electrical code allows you to bond the water pipes, but the plumbing code says no. So that's. Yeah, the electric code actually requires you. Requires you to, to do that, but the plumbing code does not recommend that. So. I just assume, and, and me and Barry have had numerous discussions about that changing the building ordinance in town to where no bonding to any plumbing and you put ground rods in around your house. Drive a 12-foot ground rod in and you directly ground to the, to the ground and, and, and not bond any that, but then, but, but the good part about running poly service lines, that kills that ground coming back on our water mains. And transference of anything like that so that's one good thing about that but uh, but I think that's part of like say he does a lot of the inspections and sees over that every day and uh, that that's primarily why we're changing some of those issues because normally at Clear Creek uh, we and we require any crossings in Clear Creek or any subdivision the crossings that they run conduit under the road that way you can put the pipe in if there's is a problem with it you hook on it and pull it back pull new through makes a lot of lot cleaner because we have full depth asphalt streets, we typically don't want to dig up anymore than we have to. And uh, that's primarily why we do that and do that. But, the, but I, I do know we've had issues with copper. And it's like I say, it's a combination. This, they just don't make the materials as good anymore on, on some stuff where they've taken out. I know the brass industry on all of our brass is all no lead brass now. Costs the industry millions of dollars. That was EPA and everybody crying wolf. The water industry is the easiest to hit. And that's typically, but we probably don't account for a half a percent of any contamination as far as lead and copper and any of that. Probably even less than that. But, uh, but that's the easiest to hit because you consume it every day and uh, all, all that stuff. But that's nature of the beast, of all the old stuff, uh, uh, anything like that. That's, that's about all I have. But, uh, but I think in all, it's, uh, this is betterment for the town. At least we have a document that uh, people can can access and uh, it'll be online once we get it in and, and that way there's no question they can call a question all they want but that's our bible that's 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 our rules and if you don't like to play our rules and play somewhere else okay what we need to do then is i need a motion to continue this the next month <coughs> President, I'll make a motion that we continue this uh, document until. Okay, we have a motion to continue this. What was it? Case 19 17. 19 17. Post tax amendments for the Danville subdivision control ordinance. The next month. Do I hear a second? Yeah. We have a second. Um, I don't think we need a roll call. Well, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. And if anybody uh, would like, we're in the process now of running 4,000 feet of water main out the fairgrounds. If anybody wants to come and look at some of the materials that we, it's out in the yard, you can come look at it and kind of show you how it operates without having to get in a hole. <laughs> a 12 inch. Where you run that from? Uh, run it from the roundabout clear up to Whisperwood. Up to what? Whisperwood, Whisperwood addition. addition. Yeah, we're looping that addition. Um, okay. That that total project that I was looking at originally, it's 6,700 feet, but uh, we can accomplish the basic looping in 4,000 feet because uh, uh, whenever we put together subdivisions, we like to continuation possible for future, and we leave a valve there to shut off. Well, uh, at the east entrance of uh, Wishford, we have an 8-inch valve right there. It's closed. And we're going to extend a 12, tie into it with an 8, and then leave a couple sections of 12-inch for to go north for future. And then uh, we're going to tie in the back side of the fairgrounds because the 8-inch is stopped right there and at least get some circulation there. 
And but we are planning for the future stuff, so it's better now to put a two thousand dollar valve in right now than later. That what way, about the residents on the east side of it. What's that? Yeah, that also too. That does open that up for annexations or any possible people to uh, uh, tie in to get service. They didn't tie in under two hundred. Yes. Yeah. We well, usually what we would do if if they were if they were um, say the. Um, Who's got the carpet place? Who? Now oh, the, uh, uh, the the carpet place, for example, I think they're annexed into the town. They they're annexed into the town. Once we run that main up through there, if they want a water service, we'll determine what their needs are. They'll pay a tap fee. Then what we will do, we'll we'll dig down the main, we'll tap it, and then we'll do a directional bore under the road, and then set a meter pit for them, and then they come to the pit. Really? Yeah. They, they won't have to no. pay for all of that. That's, that's part of what we do. Wow. Uh, but we'll charge them for the bore. A uh, current oh, tap okay. fee right now for uh, five eighths three quarters is 2400 But if we have to do a bore, we, we charge an additional 800 on that to pay for that bore and then set that. Now, there have been talk about um, they were wanting fire protection as far as the sprinkler system for the big building. That would, that would encompass a bigger water main. Uh, they would have to basically pay for all that, and they would have to contract that the out. Resident would be a resident would be we take care of that. And would and would two, can two do one? That makes sense. Oh well, yeah, one one tap for two dual meter pit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that all the time. Subdivisions okay. we tap a, a bigger uh, water line uh, okay. like Wexford. We have inch and a half okay. uh, uh, supply line splits off to two one inch meter pits okay. or one, a, a double meter pit, and then they can that feeds both because that that's just less that we have to deal with. Yeah. You know, 60 lot subdivision, you have 30 meter pits instead of 60 meter pits. Are you running the water line up 300 too? Is that the no, that's a contractor will do that. Uh, we're, we're currently in negotiations with them. They're having some issues with easements. No kidding. Farther north, far, far, farther north, but uh, they plan on, uh, I think they're probably, when it's all said and done, they're going to install about 8,000 feet of pipe. Going up there, 12 inch. Yeah. Uh, 12 inch up. Up to where the I think there's about 2,000 feet up to the 300, and then they're going across. That'll be 12 inch. Then once they get into the addition, it'll be eight and six, and all that. But uh, I did talk to them about their east-west run, the easement they give us. We don't know how that's going to develop, uh, so there will be no fire hydrants in that certain section across no man's land. Because if you put a hydrant in it, sometimes it developed, and next thing you know, you got to move a hydrant. So it's cheaper to come back and install a hydrant later, a later date. But uh, that's, we're having some issues with their engineers. They're having problems. They, they sent me Indianapolis Water Company plans, you know, laid out like Indianapolis Water. And, and I met with the engineer, and then he, we were, I kind of did a teacher thing with the red ink pen and did all that. And then they brought back in the same plans that they had before because that engineer left job and he went somewhere else so kind of left them hanging <laughs> so they got to come back i said you bring him personally here and we will take him from step a to z what we want and how how we want it laid out and uh, uh hopefully they can get get stuff going but i i think they'll probably said and done they'll probably spend over a million dollars just in the water line and infrastructure on that so it's uh but that's uh more development the Preliminary stage is probably later this fall, but I don't think they're going to start breaking ground to probably first of the year on that and get that going. But they they're, they're trying to secure some easements, but I know there there's some issues because part of that is uh, I think town road as well. It's town road up so far, and then the rest of it's all county. Yeah, so they're having some issues with that. But they're also too uh, when that's run up 300, uh, we're going to tie in Gale at the crossing because we got a stub out on the east end back on the corner I'm gonna tie that just that little loop section in and then also that will enable to open up possibly if the town ever wanted to I know when Gary was a uh, uh, town manager he he was looking at more taxation properties and wanted me to figure out what it would cost to run a uh, uh, water main all through Gale Galecrest and it was gonna be about four to five hundred thousand dollars and I said, Gary, I said, for the amount of tax money you get back versus the lack of tap fees that we get, you're behind eight ball big time. And I said, if we're going to spend money, let's spend it somewhere else where we for looping or something other than tax entity stuff and uh, for taxing. But uh, I understood he was trying to get more people to pay taxes, but that doesn't help the water company out. 
uh, anything like that. And he goes, well, why in the hell aren't you spending that money now? I said, I got other projects that we wanted to do that we've been trying to save for uh, that I felt more priority. But uh, uh, so there's always that possibly. And I talked to some uh, residents up in that area that was kind of semi-interested. They're more interested right now is for sewage. That's their primary because they're all septics up there. Their wells seem to be doing adequate. Uh, but I said, well, so as something down future about flyers, as far as possibly soliciting all the residents in that area just to see who would be interested and see if it would be well worthwhile and maybe get a grant or something like that to uh, run water lines, provide a service in that area. Because I think over time it's going to happen. It's, it's bound to. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, yeah, so there's a lot of promise, but I think everything right now is on the east side of town which that's, that's fine. There's enough traffic. <laughs> I know you all have to deal with that. Anybody that lives west here, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of promising, but, uh, and then I know Camden Creek, how long, where are we at on that? They called in the other day and there, uh, a few questions. I think they're going to start working toward recording the plat. Mm -hmm. I know Camden was, uh, originally before the other one, they were going to, Kind of preliminary stuff we marked up they were going to tap the 12 inch and run an eight in their property and then i know on the plans their midsection they have a driveway coming out to the west to 300 we put put in water line to here in case that 12 inch goes up and you can do the stub in right there and kind of so long <coughs> the yes yeah 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 so it's uh so we'll see but uh, but but i do know the uh uh one's got the Gas line running over. Yeah. Product, products line. Yeah, yeah, products line. Yeah, it's it's right in that area. Yeah, so they have to worry about that. But I do know. Wetlands. Yes, and uh, the, the the kind of the fruit bat or something like that, Indian burial ground, whatever. <laughs> but uh, there's some fly, <laughs> prehistoric fly flying around in that area. That stopped that real fast. But uh, uh, but I do know that with that coming in, they. Uh, I think that the uh, one, 260 lots at the total at that one, uh, Kensington. Kensington, yeah, I think eventually it'd be 260. And once that starts going up, that thing will probably be, well, it's four oaks. And they, they go mm -hmm. like that. I'd they say build, probably three, four years will be full. Yeah, they'll build a section out in a year. Yeah, easily, yeah. Easily, from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. And one thing, too, what we're planning on doing is in, a, in our uh, thinking on master plan, you know, on the meters, we're getting out farther and farther, um, is uh, uh, putting all those radio read. That way the guys have got the handheld, they just drive through and they can just pick them up. Just, you know, increase tap fees. We're looking at tap fee stuff, increasement, and let, let the new, new stuff pay for it and uh, uh, do it like that. And then this makes it more efficient, do it like that. So. I know Boone, you're our RMC guy. You probably all electronic reading now too. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, fortunately meters that we're putting in they're they're uh, 15 to 20 year meters. You don't have to worry about going four, three G and four G and all that. Where it's all all self self stuff. So, but uh, so, so there's a lot of good good things. Not on that first, and I think by getting these standards in, it's just gonna, it's gonna help get that stuff. So, okay, Jimmy. yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. If you forgot something, you can talk next month. I can do that. <laughs> Hopefully not. I'll let you guys know if I think so. Anything else, uh, Lisa? No. Nothing else. Not this time. No rumors. New rumors. Oh, old rumors. <laughs> Um, we are, uh, you know about this, but we did, the design review committee had uh, easels used to be, the, the space next to it, to the east. And then there's supposed to be a Greek in where the diesels. And so is the surge right to the east of diesels, or is that to the east right. of diesels? Right. It's not taking in the, yeah. the space next to it, but it will be taking. Will be taking in the whole upper story of both right. spaces. Oh really? Yeah. Like 
Greek people or Greeks? What's going Greeks? What's, what's, <laughs> what's going on? Just... is, she, she said it was a Greek, Greek pizzeria. Do you know of a franchise? I think that, yeah. I thought there was one in Bloomington. Maybe yeah. it's, maybe There's because it Lebanon sounded well. like it was really. some sort of, like they already had an established business someplace else and they were moving in to this yeah, one. Yeah, they're kind of all it. over. I am pizza. Greeks. So it's not, really, and what's the difference between a Greek pizza and a regular pizza? Yeah, that's six bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, they probably don't have marinara. And it's probably in some cases uh, feta cheese. I have goat meat on it or something like that. Opa. Barry, did she get for the surge? Did she get any of her state stuff? She's going through the process. So yeah, there's a. It's quite a large undertaking. I, I think she'll be surprised, but. She says she's got plans submitted, so um, I haven't seen any. We haven't seen any plans, so um, to the state, yeah. But hopefully, uh, menu looks good. So we're excited. Good to have steakhouse. In town. Well, if they're going to have, if they got prime rib on there, I don't think so. I thought they did. I was going to show them a picture of the prime rib that my daughter ordered when I got off. Now, he showed me this picture. That's the prime rib you want. He showed me this picture. You know, every prime rib I cut last week, and it was like wider and wider. And every time I cut it, I'll show Tommy Thompson. <laughs> the poor lady was like, oh. It was two and a half inches thick. It was a thick. Yeah. Bone in. It's enormous. Medium rare. It, well, it was good. She couldn't eat it all. So the next day, I had prime rib sandwich. There you go. And it was really good. And this was at a, at a seafood place. Usually, seafood places don't, they don't have that yeah. have that was good as steaks. They're selling to sell seafood. You know. $27, and that included the baked potato and salad and a drink. That was outstanding. Pull that ship? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to show you a picture. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can. Um, I just assume throw that out there. Do you want to talk no, about it? Do you want me to? Okay. Um, next month, you're going to be, I'm trying to, it's through the Redevelopment Commission. Basic, basically, just introducing the, um, the uh, economic TIF. development TIF area. Yeah the plan commission you don't it's not like you have to take a vote or to approve it or anything but it's basically for your review and then it will go from there it goes to the town council and then it will get uh, public hearing through town council well actually isn't the public hearing the development commission i mm, think that it goes yeah. through redevelopment yeah. for yeah. the public but it goes to the town council where is that at? Um, Danville. <laughs> no, there's, <laughs> I'm not trying to be sarcastic. It's okay, the, there's like three air TIF allocation areas. One of those is going to be the Woodland Terrace, which is the assisted living, the Danner's property, and um, the property north of Walmart. Tractor Supply and the other vacant lot. So those are the three, but the economic development area is broad. Yeah. It goes across the entire town. And there's, I'll supply you guys with the maps and everything. I'll send everything to you. The reason we went so broad with the economic development is because then it's easier to bring in a TIF plan. We were advised, we want to go big, the initial for the very difficult to add something to it. So our thought was, we can all label it economic development, but that doesn't mean it ever has to be a very specific kind of thing. When we first did it, we went crazy. Almost tiffed the whole town. Wait a minute, that's, that's going to hurt. And so 
through a lot of discussion and debate, and we whittled it down to three basic areas. Homer was just for you. I don't know if he may be able to call it today. Me? Yeah. Uh, he can give me your number, Ben Collier. He can. But anyway, that that document, Damon's uh, turn. But that document will be coming forward. Down the road. Map and then the story resolution. The document will come. That it? That's all you got? That's all I got. All right. No other agenda or anything else. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.